Good morning and welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. It's a great honor to have the two gentlemen on screen with us this morning for our keynote. Our topic is top signs of exceptional dealership culture. I believe that they exemplify it. They are Ed Roberts from Bozard Ford and Lincoln in St. Augustine, Florida, and Tony Owens Sr. from the Germain Motor Company. Ed and Tony, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Hey, thanks, thanks for having us, Ted. The, uh, I'm looking forward to the event. Yeah, uh, we've got a lot going on, Ed, so far. Thank you for all of your contributions. And, uh, you know, it's it's hard not to recognize Tony's contributions, especially on that weeknight after dark show. So, Tony, thank you for all you do and for all you do for the industry and fixed ops. Well, thanks for all you do, uh, both of you. Uh, I, I just I just love sucking all the information up, get as much information as I can. Like, you, like I told you, you never know, stop learning. You got to keep working. So there was an article written a couple of years ago in a magazine about top signs that your dealership has exceptional culture. And Ed, when I came to reading it, uh, I thought about you and your organization. Uh, and it said there are some key ways to tell if you're on the right side of the road when it comes to work culture. So there were five bullet points. And I want to go, uh, Tony and Ed, through both of these with you. And then I'll come to you first. The first point was that people stay. And I think that's a real strong indicator. Kind of take us through that in your eyes. Well, reality is we're, we're, we're all culture-driven stores. And I used to say that we're a culture-driven store. But really, we all are. And a, we got measuring sticks to determine that in different ways. And truly, CSI is a byproduct of our culture. If we have good culture, we've probably got good CSI. If we don't, maybe we're manipulating the, the, the CSI. Maybe it's pay plan driven. Here at Bozard, we don't pay anybody off of CSI. We create the atmosphere for it to be there, and then you move forward with it. And another element of that is turnover. People want to stay where they feel appreciated, and, and they want to stay where, where they feel like they're part of the team and where they can contribute. And when those two things come together, everybody wins. Well, and I know that you and uh, Tony – you know, have uh, sort of a, a mentorship uh, together, you know, that I've watched over the past uh, few months, maybe years. And, I, and talk to us about that, because, you know, I think that both of you gentlemen have a lot in common when it comes to that culture. We've both been in the car business forever. So I think that kind of ties us there together. And then ultimately, I want to learn from everybody that I can. And likewise with Tony, he tries to connect himself with good people and, and learn what he can because that's what we're in. We're in the, the people business and we can all learn from each other. And uh, Tony's had some family that's lived down in my area. Um, Tony's lived in a few different places. He's up with the Jermaine group right now. Um, but it goes back to doing some business with assist, take care of a sister down here. And that was really the initial connection. And then we've connected with each other on LinkedIn and kind of shared some resources back and forth. Um, he's hit me with some of his obstacles and, and, uh, we bounce things off of each other and we both learn. We both grow. And Tony, it's amazing how so many people around the country reach out to Ed, you know, to buy their vehicle from him or to have it serviced from him and to go a long way to uh, to see him in Florida, Tony. Well, it does, it's not surprising. Uh, if you know Ed, you know how they're, they're running the business. Uh, it's not surprising at all. Uh, and that's a, another reason why I try to stay so close to Ed and uh, – monitor him and watch him what he does because um you know that's a sincere form of flattery and uh i, I just want to work hard and do everything i can do for where i work at as well and make it a great place to be also tony the second point that was in that article about signs your dealership has exceptional culture the second one was that people support each other's successes tony how important is that that uh that we support each other, not just managers, but employees all the way through. Oh, it's extremely important. Uh, you know, I, they, everybody's got names that work with me because I don't remember names well. They call me their cheerleader uh, because I'm always cheering people on. It doesn't matter to me uh, what they do. Uh, it don't matter if they're above me, below me. We're all a team. We're all together. I want to cheer those people on and make them and help to make them the best they can be. And you can only do that with a good attitude and good camaraderie. And I, and I, that definitely shows Tony. Um, and I, I think you've, you've got uh, some nicknames for myself and for Ed as well. I do. 
<laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're the authority, of course, uh, because well, you speak for yourself. You're the authority. Uh, and B top there, how, best team on the planet. That is B top. Uh, so you got the authority of B top there. Uh, now I know your names. I didn't forget them, uh, but uh, I love to use nicknames, uh, and that's why I do that. So. And I got the authority and B top. That's the, I'm in good company right now. You there are. You go. Well, B top is what I have, and and I have the best team on the planet. And so you'll see a lot of my posts. It says hashtag uh, B top B T O P, and it says two things. It's known out for what I tell everybody that hey, we have the best team on the planet, and I tell my guys that we are the best team on the planet. But also, it's telling them the B top of your game. B top of your game every day. We got to come in and be on top of our game. Awesome. But B top. That our team isn't something that we put together and we're done. We're absolutely always under construction with BTOP. So every one of my team members has a B, that hard hat, has hashtag BTOP on the back of it, and uh, it's it's uh, it's ongoing. It is not a destination; it's a journey, and we all travel on that journey together. Best team on the planet, Ed. How do you um? How do you uh, help, you know, people uh, support each other's successes? What are some of the, you know, I know you lead by example. Um, maybe if you don't mind, maybe share one or or two that comes to mind uh, for you. Well, one of the things I like to do is I really like to get connected with people and let them know that, that I know who they are as a person and I know who I am as a person. And when you do that, you learn what their strengths are. And when you learn what their strengths are, you learn their areas of opportunity. We can call them weakness, we can call them whatever, but it's really their areas of opportunity. They got opportunity for growth there. And then we work together in teams and when we pair those together to where they have opposing strengths, well, then they can help each other with their opportunities as well. And then everybody wins. And it's, it's instead of going to work and spending 50% of your day being stuff that you're really productive at and, and grinding through the other the second half of the day, doing things that you're not so efficient at and you wish you didn't have to do as a team when both of you can work on things that you're efficient at then all of a sudden production goes through the roof because you're so much more productive at things that you're efficient at. So it isn't that you just become twice as productive. It, it skyrockets and they build off each other and they really lean on each other. When they lean on each other, then it isn't a fighting match of, he took my customer or I sold that last week when they was in here. It's all one team. We all win together. We, we go down together. We, we win together and uh, nobody wants to go down. So we're all, we're all winning together. Um, but w when you build teams, you, you gotta you gotta stay connected with them because one, it takes that connection to build the right teams. But there's three people on teams, and when I say three people, there could be more. But you either got people rowing, helping that uh, boat gain some steam. You got people looking out the window that are just going along for the ride, and then you get the hole drillers. Well, you can look at the people looking out the window and say, well, they're not doing anything. Well, maybe they're learning. Maybe they hadn't got to where they can row yet. That They are in development. So we're developing those guys. Then the hole drillers, they may have fooled you in a couple of areas, but they're really what they're doing is, is holding everybody back and they're drilling holes in the boat and you, you got to keep bailing out all the water to keep from sinking. Well, those are the ones you have to identify. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a the bad person. It could mean that they're a square peg in a round hole. You may have them in the wrong position. And if you do, they're, all they're going to do is drill holes because they don't know how to do with the position that you put them in. So it's key to connect with them and make sure you put the right teams together so they can all thrive. Ed, how many employees do you have there at, uh, at Bozard working uh, with you? Here we are towards the end of September in 2022, and we have 317 employees here now. And uh, it was less than 40 in September of 2012. So a little difference in size. Wow. Tony, uh, you work for the Jermaine uh, Motor Company, the Jermaine organization. The third thing in that uh, article I read on exceptional dealership culture, Tony, the third thing was that winners want to come aboard. Um, I know people want to come aboard and be a part of what Jermaine has. Uh, and the same thing over at Ed's store. Tony, talk to us about that, why that's so important that people want to come and be a part of what you got. It's huge. Uh my my manager myself uh you know you hear this all the time in the business well if this person leaves i'm going with him you know you hear that all the time uh we got a whole big building full of technicians and i honestly believe this i've been here a long time and i'm one of them 
uh, if he left, I would go with him. That's what kind of culture we have in that dealership. This this man is an incredible individual. He built this culture, and we're all in, uh, regardless. You know, well, you know, I've got goals of my own, uh, and that those I put those goals aside because of where I'm at. Those goals don't matter to me as much. I'm still going to work at them, but if I do what I'm doing, I'm fine with that. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I when when I get up in the morning and I get to work, when I can't wait to get there, and I'm sad to leave every day. That's a great place to be. And I'm amazed how many people I talk to around the country, leaders who tell me that they spoke to you and they would want to come aboard and be a part of what you've got going there. Talk to us a little bit about that and how you've managed to do that. Well, as part of going back to culture where you, it, it's, a, it's a feeling. And at the end of the day, all of us have buildings that we come into and the buildings are brick and mortar. And there's nothing to do with culture in that building, no matter how clean it is, no matter how dirty it is, no matter how organized it is. It's the people that show up there every day. And when those people come in and they enjoy what they do and they get to, to contribute to the team and they get to share their ideas, then they don't go anywhere. So that goes back to the CSI piece and the turnover piece. When they don't leave, then you don't necessarily have the openings. When you don't have the openings, then people still want to come to work because they want to be a part of that. They're hearing all the positive stuff and they want to come be a, a part of it. Well, sometimes people have to wait a, a, as long as two years to come on board with us. And you think, well, just hire them, just hire them. Well, it has to be strategic. You don't want to bring somebody in and, and overstaff this area and not be prepared to take care of them here. So you have to really have a plan that you're working to where you bring the right elements at the right time. You can easily overwrite the shop by bringing in too many advisors, or you can easily not write enough for the shop by having too many technicians. So it's a balance to really grow and allow everybody to have the right opportunity to make a good living, enjoy what they're doing, and be a part of the team. And Could the I have something there? Go ahead, Tony. Uh, uh, just, just give you an idea. Uh, my manager, he, he – interviews people extensively and I, this is the only place I've ever heard this. Now I've been 41 years in this and it, a lot of times service managers and service directors, they'll get somebody on there cause they need somebody to turn some hours. I've actually heard this man say this more than one time, probably more than a half a dozen times. He will not fit in with the team. It doesn't matter to him if this guy's a 70, 80 hour week guy, if he don't fit in with the team, if he's not with team Jermaine, uh, he's not going to get on. That's important. That is so huge to me. You have to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. That's a cliche uh, response or a cliche saying that's used out there a lot, but you have to know the direction that you want to go in. And, and Tony, we hire on three C's here. It's character, chemistry, and competency. And a character is the biggest piece of that. Uh, they have to be a good person, but that is really a judgment call. We got to know, know that will they represent our brand correctly? Chemistry is the Uno number one. Um, if they have to be able to fit in, they can be. They can have all the experience in the world. They can be the best technician in the world. They can be the best salesperson in the world. Best salesman. If they can't fit the team. If they can't bring something of value to the team, then they probably don't fit. And then the competency part. That's really just an element of are they teachable? Because I'd rather have the green guy that I can grow than the guy that's ripe. And when he's ripe, he's starting to rot. So I'll take the green one all day long because he's still growing. That leads me, Ed, to the fourth one. People smile. And I, I, I note that not just about your your team and your customers, your guests, but you, Ed Roberts. It seems you always have time. You make time, you know, to take that phone call, uh, to talk to that person, uh, and you smile. And you've got that you've got that way about you. And I think that's, you know, that's beholden in some great leaders. Well, we set the tone for our people. But there's so many elements behind that of being able to answer that phone call. It's building the right structure. It's putting the right things in place. It's empowering people to be able to do their job. Because you may have, and you see it in a lot of organizations, where somebody will go in and tell somebody about a concern that they're having. And in their mind, they have turned that concern over. Well, they may have turned it over to somebody that can't do anything about it. So it's key to have the right people in place, identify that, lay the structure chart out to where it's clear for everybody. Certain people can only go down so far, but anybody at any level can go up as high as they need to, who, whoever they feel the most comfortable with. And when you do those things, you really find yourself becoming more effective. A lot of times we go in every day and we stay busy, but busy mm -hmm. doesn't always mean effective. And when you lay out the right structure, 
you can really become effective. And when you're effective, you still have time. It's not that you're that 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 you're reacting and doing different things all day long. It's you're making things happen through processes that's put in place, through people that you have in place, and you have time to continue to work on that and to continue to make it better because we're under construction. Always under construction. Always. Tony? Always got to be building. <laughs> the last one, um, and this kind of sets the tone for the day today. We have a lot of speakers, Ed and Tony, coming up, a lot of panels, a lot of great discussions. The last one that you can tell you're on the right side of the road when it comes to dealership work culture is that sales are up. And I know they've been up for a lot, not everybody, but for a lot of dealerships. Um, you know, Ed, uh, looking out uh, over the near-term horizon, you know, how do you see that? Yeah, I know you've had some great months, just this, this last one, especially, and right now, um, you know, what do you what do you see? Well, sales are up, and, and sales are up across the board, but are they up to the point of what they could be? We talk about people do business with people, and they do, but we advertise our business. We don't advertise our people. And when somebody comes in and every time they come in, there's somebody different sitting in these chairs, they can't necessarily do business with those people again and again. So a key part of that is having is minimizing turnover so that people can do business with people. And when they come in, they can, they can do business with, with Mary or they can do business with Alex because that's who they see each time they come in. And when they, when that happens and the trust builds and when trust builds, it's not really selling. It's just asking for the business. It's, it's advising. And the, when you do those things, the sales come. And it continues to compound what the industry is doing. So if the industry is closing strong, you can still outrun the industry by double digits when you have the right elements in place to do that. Yep. And you've put a lot of those right elements in place. And Tony, Jermaine has as well, you know, over many, many years in doing that. Absolutely. Uh, it's a sensational organization. It's, it's, it's unlike any I've ever seen or been in before. It's I'm so proud and blessed and fortunate to go there every day. I can't wait to get there. I, I love it. Uh, and I am so proud of both of you gentlemen. And uh, uh, I don't know if the audience knows it, but I probably talk to both of you at least several times a week, if not more. And uh, uh, the relationship that uh, you gentlemen have with each other, uh, mentoring, and uh, you know, I'm so honored to be a part of that and uh, to have you kick off our day today at the fixed ops round table roaring 20s tony might i say you look marvelous i love your attire today well uh, i appreciate that thank you very much i do the best i can <laughs> <laughs> and ed we're always under construction ted i just want to tell you yesterday was phenomenal i'm sure today is uh, i look forward to these every time they come around and i want to leave the audience with something and when we, we all have been out, most all of us, not all of us, have, have had multiple jobs. And we'll go in and we'll interview with the GM or we'll interview with somebody and they'll tell you the five reasons why they need to make a change. And you don't, and then you go in, you say, yeah, I can do that. And you go in and that's your baseline and you start working from there. Well, every day is our new baseline. Never lose sight of those five things. So always create yourself a plan that these are the things that I'm going to work on. And every day is a new day. Maybe you didn't get to work on them yesterday. But if they replaced you, somebody else would work on those things. So just constantly remind yourself, I got these are the next few things that I can make progress with. And then when you do that, you're always just getting started. And when you're just getting started, it's it's endless where you can go. Love it. Love it. Love, love your attitude and enthusiasm, both of you gentlemen. Tony Owens and Ed Roberts, thank you for setting the pace here today at the Roaring Twenties, uh, getting our keynote started. And uh, very grateful to both of you for your friendship and all you do for the Fixed Ops community. Well, thanks for having Thank me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Ted. Ed Roberts and Tony Owens leading us off here today.